My guest today is known as the Green Genie. Dr. Elizabeth Armstrong leads on a journey to tap into your share of $72 trillion in natural products and services. You learn how to balance heart and mind awareness in partnership with nature. Her intuitive skills and educational background weaves both spirit and science into a strong framework designed around your unique talents. Your benefit, you benefit from wisdom to improve your well-being, keep money in your pocket while protecting our planet Earth. Boy, Elizabeth, that sounds absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I wish everybody felt that way. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very, very much for having me, Gail. I feel honored to be here. Uh, yes, and I do have a very strong passion for our environment. So what made you decide on the subject matter that you coach your clients with? I mean, are you coaching them on the environment or are you coaching them on uh, their well-being because of how they uh, conduct the, envi the environment and what they eat and do and so forth? Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, yes. Actually, what I do is help people to learn how to balance their heart with their mind in partnership with nature. And That's what not an easy thing to do, is it? <laughs> well, it can be easy. It just takes practice. It's kind of like lifting weights. <laughs> if you want to have these strong muscles, then you have to go and lift weights every day. Well, if you want to benefit from nature's natural products and services, well, then the trick is to uh, practice. And it really is a wealth. What inspired me to go in this direction was that uh, I was teaching environmental science online. And when I was teaching environmental science, what I noticed was is our world is in a pickle. And, and I, yeah, I think many of our, uh, our radio audiences can think about it right now. They'll say, yeah, well, I think we do have some challenges going on at this time. Well, you know, um, I know you feel it's important for people to shift to heart-centered awareness, but what can you do to be connected with your heart awareness? Okay, what people can do, I think one of the most important things is to recognize it's not all on a person. It's not all of their responsibility to fix where we are right now. But by taking the time to work on ourselves, then everything else unfolds and fixes. So the way to tap into nature, nature is an abundant source of natural products and services, as you mentioned in my bio, by tapping into that uh, simple tweaks on your house. But what it also has is a very strong spiritual connection because really we're all related on this planet. Our DNA is exactly the same and almost every living organism, plant and animal, insects and humans. I mean, I was astonished. And then when I really thought about it, I recognized that everything is about energy. And it's that vibrational energy that's going on within us, you know, with the electrons and neutrons and atoms and all that, that interconnects all of us. So what I do is help my clients to become centered on themselves, on their heart, on their own vibrational frequencies and energies, and then extend that out into nature and connect with the spirit of the nature world. Now, what so happened? I'm how sorry. Do they, how do they, I mean, I can understand that they, that that's what they need to do. But I would think that um, people might have a hard time making that shift. Do you find that or, or do you find that it's easy for people? I find that it's easy for people because they're already doing it. Uh, biophilia is a term used for people's natural attraction toward nature. And science actually shows that when people go out into and spend time in nature, it actually improves their health and well-being. Uh, studies have been done with blood pressure, 
pregnancy outcomes, obesity, even smoking. If you put green space, green space into your community, it actually lowers the percentage of people that smoke cigarettes. It lowers obesity as well. So now when you say out in nature, since we, um, we have a variety of seasons, in fact, uh, you know, there's some really bad snow ice type things happening right now. Um, do you find that this changes as the seasons change? You're absolutely right, Gail. It does change. Uh, one of the major factors is the sun. You know, the sun is one of our natural components. And as the days get shorter, people tend to get depressed and they stay inside longer. And my recommendation there is to get full spe spectrum light bulbs that you can get at any hardware store. And then you're getting that full spectrum of light that helps to improve your moods. The full spectrum allows certain hormones and uh, and enzymes and, uh, to be produced in your body to balance out your emotions. Well, now I know why I, I'm in such a good mood all the time, because I live in uh, Miami Beach, which is, you know, sunny, sunny, and also live in San Diego and Palm Springs, which are both pretty nice climates. And so now I know why. And I always say I, I just do not like gray days. And from the time I was a kid, I always said, you know, I didn't want to live up north because I wanted the sunshine. So uh, it's interesting because I guess that's why I feel good all the time. So let me ask you something. How do you think placing a value on nature improves business success? Oh, well, definitely. Um, our bit, like I said, our world's in a pickle and businesses are having challenges. So there is a new um, paradigm opening up and that's the sustainability stock exchange businesses up to a hundred percent of fortune 100 companies oh i take that back 80 percent of fortune 100 companies have put green in their portfolio because they recognize the benefits and i'll give you an example there as well uh, one of the benefits is like for people in the past people you know you would get employed with a business you were put in your little cubby hole and expected to perform in a environment where everything was the same for everyone. But people have different bodily needs. So now what green businesses are doing is to create spaces where the employees can look out a window at nature, to where they have a place where they can go outside and eat, where they can uh, adjust their own temperature controls and in doing this, they've actually improved productivity and retention rate of their employees. That's really neat. I mean, you know, that's that's quite good. I mean, are you finding that in mostly Fortune 50 or Fortune 100 companies? Or are you finding that more in entrepreneurial companies? It works in any sort of a business. Oh, I'm sure it does. That doesn't mean that the the people at the top think so, you know. So yeah. I'm just curious where where you're finding most of this happening. Well, here's the thing, though. The businesses that come on to this new concept, well, I shouldn't say new. It's been here for a few years now. It's those upper uh, management that recognize the value in this that will end up helping their businesses to thrive. Because when they have higher productivity, they don't have to train new employees all the time that are leaving. Their employees are in better health, so they're not having to pay sick leave for their employees. So uh, they don't have to bring in substitutes that really don't know what's going on. When businesses recognize that value and start incorporating these different techniques of greening up their environment, then they become better competitors. Well, I agree with you. I just am curious to see whether, I guess what I'm asking is who is buying into this 
more. A uh, huge organization like our big names or uh, the entrepreneurial organizations, which are probably being started by a younger generation. Well, it's interesting you should mention the millennials, uh, that younger generation. It's actually the millennials that are very, very interested in this because they've been exposed to it in school. They've, uh, you know, when I was young, I didn't know about recycling or composting. But now more families are taking this on and they're doing it in schools. And these younger people are being grown up or growing up in this generation of recognizing the value in all of these things. Well, that's what I, I kind of uh, thought, you know, that uh, it was really more the millennials that are kind of demanding this. And um, since many of them are, in fact, I just read uh, the top 40 under or the top 30 under 30. And some of them are the top 40 under 40. They're really young and they're making lots of money and they're making a big difference in the world as well. So um, I was thinking that they're probably... <laughs> the ones who are are pushing this more than than some of the big companies, but you also um, say it's important to take care of what you call nature's critters, and I'm wondering what those critters are. I mean, I'm a big animal person, so um, uh, I'm just wondering what you consider nature's critters and how you would take care of them. Any wildlife at all, anything from birds to crickets to fungi to anything that's living on this planet, including ourselves. And when you take care of them, what I tend to do is keep water outside 24-7, especially in hot, dry climates, because you're providing water for them. You kind of see it like ourselves, especially in hot climates. If we were to live without water, well, we wouldn't live. But when we have plenty of water, then we're healthier. And so by keeping the water outside, we have encroached on so much natural habitat that now I've seen pictures on the news and in Facebook where someone comes out and finds a bear in their kiddie pool. Yes, I've seen that. And I always wonder, was that bear just hot or <laughs> why is that? Because I actually have a, a cabin up in uh, Tennessee and uh, I think one day my property manager told me that um, there was a bear in my hot tub. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> okay, you know, of course it did a little damage too while it was there. But um, and I thought maybe maybe he was just trying to cool off. Well, as we are competing with our natural wildlife for space, water, food, then they are starting to visit neighborhoods and people become scared and yes I'd say that bear was definitely probably trying to cool himself off but it's interesting you would bring up taking care of the wildlife what people don't realize is that you know we're so used to using plastic bags they give us a plastic bag we carry our stuff I've used a canvas bag for many years and some stores are actually banning plastic such as Walmart I think their Mexico store uh, they don't even have plastic. I went to a Target. I don't mean to promote these businesses, but I went to a Target and it, they just set my stuff on the other side and said, okay, here. And I had to put them back in the cart and take it out to my car because they weren't giving me anything to carry it with. What happens is with plastic, it breaks down in sunlight. It goes into the ocean and there are filter feeders in the ocean, such as whales and um, other swimming organisms that's how they eat they open up their mouth and the water goes in and they filter it through their gills and they have found that for each pound of food in the ocean there is six pounds of plastic small pieces wow that's so our, yeah our ocean critters are actually starving because they aren't able to get um any quality food because of the plastic in the ocean so um, when did you get involved in all of this, Elizabeth? I mean, um, is this how you started out? I mean, how did you become the green genie? How did, um, uh, is this what you studied in school? Is your doctorate in this? I mean, 
what what uh, how how did you get to where you are? 